So, we just received some genuinely groundbreaking analysis this week about the debris field 3i atlas left behind. According to the Otautahi Oxford Interstellar Object Population Model, what 3i atlas deposited in our solar system isn't a random scatter at all. It's a signature, a calling card, one that tells us where this visitor came from and what kind of star system produced it. On December 24th, Associate Professor Michelle Bannister from the University of Canterbury published a new analysis describing 3i Atlas as a calling card from the past. And honestly, that phrasing is more technically accurate than poetic. Let me walk you through what the latest research actually reveals. The first thing to understand is this. Interstellar objects don't arrive randomly. They're products of specific stellar populations, each with distinct characteristics. The Otautahi Oxford model, developed by Hopkins, Bannister, and colleagues at Oxford and Canterbury, predicts the properties of interstellar visitors by combining Gaia satellite data on nearby stars with models of protoplanetary disk chemistry. When 3i Atlas entered the solar system at a velocity of 57.99 kilometers per second, that speed wasn't arbitrary. It encoded information about the object's age and its origin within the structure of the Milky Way. The measured galactic velocity components for 3i Atlas are u equals minus 51.0 kilometers per second, v equals minus 19.2 kilometers per second, and w equals plus 18.5 kilometers per second, all relative to the sun. What makes this especially significant is the w component, the vertical motion through the galactic plane. That 18.5 kilometers per second vertical velocity is unusually high. Most objects in our local stellar neighborhood have much smaller W values. When researchers compared this measurement with the predicted distributions from the Otautahi Oxford model, they found something remarkable. In this framework, a large W component acts like an age meter. For 3i Atlas, that vertical speed implies it formed more than 7.6 billion years ago, long before our own sun existed. For context, the solar system is about 4.6 billion years old. This interstellar visitor predates the sun itself. But here's where the calling card idea becomes truly precise. The velocity doesn't just tell us the object's age. It tells us which stellar population within the galaxy it came from. The Milky Way has multiple structural components. The thin disk contains younger stars that formed relatively recently and have higher metallicity. The thick disk, by contrast, contains much older stars with lower metallicity. The velocity distribution of 3i Atlas places it firmly within the thick disk population. That thick disk membership carries specific implications for composition. These stars formed when the galaxy had far fewer heavy elements. Their protoplanetary disks had very different chemistry. And the planetesimals that formed within those disks, objects like 3i Atlas, should preserve that ancient chemical signature. The Otautahi Oxford model predicts that thick disk interstellar objects should have high water mass fractions. In low metallicity protoplanetary disks, water ice becomes one of the dominant solid forming materials beyond the ice line. Recent spectroscopic observations support this prediction. The James Webb Space Telescope detected carbon dioxide, water vapor, and carbon monoxide in ratios that suggest formation in an extremely cold, volatile rich environment. 3i Atlas shows an unusually CO2 dominated composition with far more carbon dioxide than water, a chemical fingerprint of formation in a very distant, frigid region of its original star system. What turns this into a literal calling card is the debris itself. The sizes and makeup of the dust grains act like a fingerprint, encoding the conditions of the star system where 3i Atlas first formed. The anti-tail structure that rare, sunward-pointing feature, is composed of particles between 10 and 100 microns in radius. These larger grains resist solar radiation pressure far more effectively than typical comet dust. Their abundance tells us something important about the internal structure and composition of the nucleus. Professor Bannister has emphasized in recent interviews that we have only a few hundred days to interpret what 3i Atlas is telling us before it fades beyond our detection limits. The debris field it deposited represents a frozen sample of material from a dead or evolved star system, one that no longer exists in its original form. 
The model also addressed a critical question. Are 3i Atlas, 2i Borisov, and 1i Umuamua related? Could they have originated from the same source system? Statistically, the odds that 3i Atlas came from the same system as 1i Umuamua or 2i Borisov are extremely small, well below a few percent, even under generous stream scenarios. When researchers calculated the minimum velocity separations for random triplets of interstellar objects drawn from the Otau Tahi Oxford model, the actual separation between the three known objects fell squarely within the expected distribution. This confirms that they are independent samples from the broader galactic population, not members of a single coherent stream. That statistical independence is informative in itself. It means that each interstellar visitor we detect represents a different stellar system, a different formation environment, and a different chapter of galactic history. The debris that 3i Atlas deposited will remain in our solar system for millennia. Some particles will cross Earth's orbital path. Others will be perturbed by planetary encounters and scattered throughout the inner solar system. Every particle carries isotopic ratios and chemical signatures that encode conditions in a protoplanetary disk that formed more than 7 billion years ago. Proposed collection experiments could analyze these particles directly. Satellites equipped with aerogel collectors could capture millimeter-scale fragments. The International Space Station could deploy exposure panels designed to intercept micron-sized dust grains. Laboratory analysis of even a single confirmed interstellar particle would provide data that remote observations simply can't. Isotope ratios of oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and silicon would reveal nucleosynthetic processes in the parent star. Organic compounds could show whether prebiotic chemistry follows universal pathways or varies with stellar metallicity. The calling card concept extends well beyond 3i Atlas. With the Vera Rubin Observatory now operational, the Otau Tahi Oxford model predicts between 5 and 50 interstellar object detections during the legacy survey of space and time. Each detection will add another sample from the galactic population. Each will carry its own velocity signature, revealing age and origin. Each will deposit debris that can be analyzed for composition. The model predicts a complex structure in the interstellar object population. Not a smooth distribution, but clumpy features in velocity space tied to galactic dynamics, streams linked to spiral arm passages, concentrations from stellar clusters that have long since dispersed. 3i Atlas is the first object detected from the thick disk population. Its velocity and radiant, the direction it arrived from, fall within predicted ranges, but near the upper edge of expectations for size. The nucleus is likely between 1 and 5 kilometers in diameter, larger than typical predictions for objects with its velocity profile. That size discrepancy suggests the galactic size frequency distribution for interstellar objects may be shallower than previous models assumed. If larger objects are more common than expected, future surveys could detect far more interstellar visitors than current projections suggest. The debris trail represents more than physical remnants. It's an information package. The particle size distribution encodes the comet's internal structure and its response to solar heating. The chemical composition reveals formation conditions in a protoplanetary disk billions of years ago. The spatial distribution maps how material disperses under solar radiation, pressure, and gravitational perturbations. When astronomers describe 3i Atlas as leaving a calling card, they're being precise. Just as a business card encodes information about identity and origin, this debris field encodes the object's birthplace and evolutionary history. We now have the tools to read that card. Spectroscopy reveals chemistry. Orbital dynamics reveal age and galactic population membership. Particle analysis will reveal isotopic signatures. Together, these data constrain models of planet formation, not just in our solar system, but across the entire galaxy. The calling card that 3i Atlas left behind will remain readable for years, possibly decades, as particles drift through the solar system. Some will burn up in Earth's atmosphere as meteors. Others may be captured by spacecraft collectors. All of them carry information from a star system that formed when the universe was young and our galaxy was still taking shape. Drop a comment and let me know where you're watching from and what time it is there. And please leave a like if you found this analysis valuable.
God bless you.